today's message is going to be from First John 2 through 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So I looked looked into this scripture, and from Matthew Henry's commentary, the concise commentary, he says that the world draws the heart from God, and the more that the love of the world prevails, the more that the love of God decays. And I believe that it's, it's, it's every true believer of Jesus Christ's earnest desire to be like him, to be a mago Dei, which is the image bearer of God. But our lust can easily overpower us and keep us in the flesh. In a world that constantly beckons us to covet and desire more things, clothes, jewelry, toys, makeup, video games, etc., we have to be the more vigilant against having an inordinate affection against these things. When we live in a very media-saturated world where daily our flesh is aroused by advertisement and a bombarding of enchanting programs that can entertain us for hours and hours without end, causing us to covet that which is not ours and believe we need that which we do not. Through social media, studies have found that 60% of young users of Instagram, for an example, become depressed and feel that their life has no meaning. On Facebook, there's an epidemic of people becoming dissatisfied with their lives, partners, and jobs due to being exposed to carefully curated highlights of their peers' lives. Our stars and idols live lives that we can't, and we're daily exposed to this fact. And the list goes on. My friends, this is all carefully thought out part of a large-scale attack on the minds of the masses by our enemy keeping us spiritually dead and stuck to what I would call uh, junk food for the flesh. It fills us up, but it only lasts for a moment, and so we have to keep going back to it for that hit, for that sick, for that dopamine rush. And this is by design. This is the same trick that the enemy used on Eve and on Jesus in the wilderness. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's just now we're in the digital age. And so we go about lusting through our flesh, of looking at people that are not maybe our spouses through the Internet, or looking at that fancy handbag, or those nice shoes that that lady has in that picture. And we find ourselves wanting these things. And we have to take a good, hard look at how we use these tools to see whether they have become uh, tools that cause us to sin, to covet, to boast, to seek man's approval, and to fuel our need for affection. God has to be our source. The rising suicide rate among young and older generations, depression, divorce, etc., has been directly linked to too much stimulus stimuli through the TV and social media. Do not be fooled. God is not mocked. What a man sows, so shall he reap. And many of us are sowing into our flesh for hours and hours upon end using social media. We have to be careful to not allow ourselves to be swept away by all that is in this world. For it is passing away. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit that gives life and gives us power to overcome and to endure to the end. Not filled with covetousness, worldliness, envy, lust, emulation, and all those things that are said in Galatians, that when we are filled with those things, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's simple. It's input-output. What we put into ourselves 
will come out of ourselves. So the more we sit and we spend our time and our company with the things of the world, looking at it and busting over it and desiring it and and in our minds and thinking about how we'll look with that new person if I had that man or if I had that type of wife, we will not be filled with the love of God, with the power of God, with His Spirit. And that's what God desires for us. We can't spend all of our time with man and then be surprised when we do not see the power of God in our lives. Uh, we snap at people on the job. We get angry with our kids. We're mean. We have anxiety. Why is this? Because we spent our whole week with our eyes everywhere but on Christ. And we're filled with junk food. So junk's going to come out. But there's hope. I believe that if you have been made a partaker in Christ, that there is they have to earnestly contend against our flesh and be aware of the wiles of the devil. And I believe that one of the biggest tools that nobody saw coming, that is killing and destructing and, and shipwrecking things all over the world, is social media. It's television. It's Facebook. It's Instagram. It's these things that were supposed to be tools for us to use these tools have now trapped us. So we can see it now and we can fight it. So this is a very serious warning that we should all consider very diligently. Uh, the same sin that weighs us down will ultimately bring you down to hell if you do not get the victory over it on this side of eternity. And social media is a tool that can be weakening us in our walk if we do not use self-control and honestly examine our use of these things. Why do we go to it in the middle of the night? Is this the first thing that we check for early in the morning? Do we spend more time on it than we do with our families? We have to honestly examine our hearts in light of the fact that we live in a digital age where we are hooked up to, to our cell phones and televisions like they are an IV at the hospital. We have to take careful watch over our souls by daily dying to ourselves and praying to the Good Shepherd to protect us and keep us. Ask Him to fill us afresh with the desire for his word and less of the desire of the world because they are enticing. It is more easy to come home at the end of a tiring day and watch TV versus laboring in prayer. But one will have better results in the long run than the other. So if you've fallen into worldliness, we have Christ the Advocate that we can appeal to to give us strength to the fight and forgive us for giving in to carnality. We are to walk in newness of life, and it is up to us to hold ourselves accountable to what we spend our time doing in these last days. But we can win this fight. We can take back our lives from our cell phones and from our television and from being stuck in our flesh. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So he who endures unto the end will be saved. I would like everyone to ask themselves, what are you feeding on? Who or what has your heart? Are you being like Eve, tempted by the look of things? Or like Adam, playing a passive role in the battle when you should be alert and ready to stand on God's truth. Do you know truth? Let's examine ourselves. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So go to the cross and get honest with God. But we have to be careful to get to the doing. 
for we know not when the master of the house will return. Let us pray that he finds us busy in the Lord's work, and not preoccupied or caught up in vanity and pomp, or looking down at our cell phones when we must be looking up, for our redemption is drawing ever closer.